African countries should stop repaying IMF. Let's get to it. IMF, World Bank, all other institutions, they make African countries jump through hoops. Loans will never be able to pay. The US, when they borrow money, they're getting it in 1.5, 1.9 interest rate. Africans, when they get the same amount of money, they're paying 9, 10%. The people who don't need a break, they get a break. The ones who need a break, they don't get a break. The sheer survival of the World Bank IMF is based on the fact that African countries and, and many other developing countries do not succeed. Their success is based on our failure. That has to change. And guess who can make that change? We, the children of Africa, we, the Africans, are the ones who have to say, we know your game now. Enough is enough. We're not playing it anymore. And this is where the diaspora come in. There are more Ghanaian doctors in New York City than in, in the entire country of Ghana. There are more doc Nigerian doctors in LA than in the entire country of Nigeria. So let's be hmm. serious here. What Africa needs is capacity, capacity, capacity. And that capacity is in the diaspora. So it behooves us to bring the diaspora together. Let them understand what is really going on in our Africa. Diaspora are not going home. Diaspora are angry about Africa because they are not understanding the root cause of why Africa is where it is today. This is absolutely true. Very, very true. It's like the diaspora, once they leave Africa, they, they feel like they've escaped Africa. But in real sense, when you're out here, you should be looking for how to develop your home. Yeah, that's a good point. So let's look at an Africa that must be free to take care of herself, an Africa that's free from exploitation from outsiders. The multinationals who are stealing from Africa every day arm young people, drag them up and send them to go chop off a few heads. The rest of the village runs away Imagine so they come that. behind and do their illegal mining. In broad daylight, I use an example of the DRC. If you ever fly very low over the DRC, you'll see tarmacs in the jungle. You'll see 747s flying into DRC, picking up minerals and flying right out. The same multinationals are responsible for arming young people and giving them MK-16s. Because why? Their satellites in the skies are telling them where that village is. There's, there are lots of diamonds. So what do they do? We black people must understand what is really going on. Because what we are shown instead is, oh, look at those Africans killing each other. There are some serious games that have been played in Africa for far too long. And once we understand that, we can strategize as to how we can begin to bring the difference and bring the change that Africa needs. And that change can only come if the African diaspora are united and the Wakanda villages, as I call them. It is our organized way of saying, starting with one African diaspora center of excellence, it will be a new city, a developmental hub that we can then take from there. Every sector is developed. Take healthcare. How many doctors do we need in this region to take care of this many people? We pick up education, same thing. We pick up engineering, we pick up electricity. How many megawatts of power do we have in the region? How many do we need? Be it solar, be it wind, be it hydro, be it geothermal, be it nuclear. I want to bring you back to West Africa. President Alassane Ouattara uh, made a declaration that the front safer will be replaced with the ECHO. But many will argue that because there's still foreign reserves being placed into French economy, it's just the same currency, different name. Which Absolutely. I agree with that. The question I had right from the get-go, uh, first, especially the problem here. That's why I disagree a little bit when she said the diaspora needs to come together. Because I think the problem should start from the top down to the diaspora. I mean, I don't completely disagree with her, but I think the leaders should start with the restructuring. Because the major problem we see is corruption at the top and mismanagement from the top. And that sprinkles down to what people perceive in Africa or what the diaspora see when they look at Africa. So yeah, that is a good point that she raised there. Back to the Euro. Secondly, it's still going to be printed in, uh, uh, in France. Third, they may try to say we are uh, eliminating the uh, colonial tax, but they are replacing it with the uh, foreign exchange tax. These countries are very capable of negotiating their own deals. Their funds don't have to go through the French uh, Central Bank. Uh, even countries wanting to trade with African countries, they don't have to go through French Central Bank. So there are all those technicalities that are just stupid. What's needed is complete separation. France has got to get out of Africa, really, honestly. Enough is enough to take $500 billion out of Africa. I mean, it is insanity of the highest order. In countries that are supposedly poor, and making those countries fund French education, French 
healthcare system, create jobs for French youth while we are struggling in our country. It's no longer sustainable. President Macron needs to wake up and smell the coffee. And the African youth are the ones he's going to have to deal with. The African youth are not taking it anymore. They want what belongs to them. Financial institutions, though they, them too. If I had my way, all the African heads of states should stop paying back any loans that were given by IMF and World Bank. Those loans have been paid gazillion times over. Many people in the diaspora are wondering, yes, you're no longer the ambassador to the US, but they would like for you to take up the position of the African Union Commission. I have to say, when the drumbeat was getting louder about me becoming the chairman of the African Union, I disregarded it because it's nothing that I've ever uh, thought about. But increasingly, as we are looking at the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area, you have to understand the role of the African Union Commission is to be the implementer of the decisions that are agreed upon by the African heads of states. So it's important that we not get a career diplomat who is now only looking for their next position we need somebody who can think outside the box. We need a business-minded person. Because people are dying, my dear young child. We've got to realize that children are dying every day. Women are dying every day. Millions of youth are unemployed and we're too busy being diplomatic. Not hitting the nail in the head. If we don't get an African Union chair who realizes that you're under the table and they're making you fight with your brothers and sisters as to who got the larger chunk, of the crumbs under the table. That way, you never have to talk about what's on the table. That is a blind chair. Mm -hmm. We need somebody who gets it. I do know that there's a need for major disruption at the African Union level. If I were to become chair of the African Union, I want to bring disruption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Bring disruption. I feel like most of these African leaders don't even know like the real plights of their people. I don't. I feel like they don't understand. They live in luxury so much that. They don't feel it. So when they go, they're trying to be nice. At some points, you rascality is necessary. I mean, I'm not saying go fight people, but at some point, there has to be like a switch in your mindset where it's like, it's enough. My people need this now. So anything I do has to be for my people. And also their policies don't make any sense. These leaders we've seen, they don't have any trace of business or history of business. They never did anything besides be heads of their family, maybe lead their wives, that's if they could. And from there, they move on to being head of states. I mean, it's, it doesn't make sense. And I don't even blame them so much. I also blame the people that voted because if you're voting somebody, you need to find the track record. Like, what has this person headed before? What has he achieved in his life? What Lots of Africans, they don't do that before they vote. And we get all these leaders who don't know about leadership, about anything. We put them in position to, to move the country to the next level. And then when they are being faced with a real business decision, they don't know what to do. They're acting all diplomatic and acting all cute. As long as they get money or get something that seems favorable, they sign it. And major problem with africa is mismanagement major problem mismanagement and i keep saying that i know people don't don't like it i would like to blame other people but also i want us to blame ourselves and hold ourselves accountable i want us to do that first and then once we've held ourselves accountable and fixed from our end then we can now start touching base and you know restructuring giving people trouble <laughs> yeah Anyways, let me know what you think about that video. Feel free to share your thoughts. That woman, I, I watch a lot of her clips on TikTok and I, I like the way she talks. You know, I like she gets very extreme sometimes, but it's necessary. Yeah. Anyway, share your thoughts, smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.